Adapter design pattern in software engineering is a pattern which allows us to use the structure or interface of an existing class with another class which is considerably different and is not compatible. Adapter pattern is most frequently used when we need to retrofit the classes created for a legacy system to be used with new classes which cannot be integrated directly with the legacy classes. A real world example can be of a video cable which can be used to convert a VGA output from a graphics card into a DVI input supported by the monitor that we are using. The final output is a video on the screen but the source video data is different. A code example can be of an older class which has a function returning computational data which cannot be directly used with the new output requirements but it would also be a waste of time and resources to again write the computational logic or maybe copy it in a new class. Adapter pattern can help in such a situation where we can retrofit an older class interface which cannot be modified because it is already being used in so many places. The implementation of an adapter pattern can vary from project to project but more or less it boils down to creating a new class which acts as an adapter between two classes. The class that needs to be retrofitted is called as an adaptee. Sometimes you may need to create an adapter interface as well if you need to inject multiple implementations of adapter classes in a constructor. A similar pattern is the decorator pattern but in decorator we add additional functionality to an already existing class but in adapter pattern we retrofit a class using an intermediate adapter to be used with another class. There is another pattern which is similar and that is bridge pattern. Bridge pattern is implemented while the project is being created and adapter pattern comes into picture much later. Alright so let's code the adapter pattern in the C sharp language which is why all of you are here and hopefully I will be able to make you understand how this design pattern works without further confusing you. So this is a console application created in Visual Studio 2017. The code example which I am going to create is of a video cable which can convert the video from one format to another format. So suppose that if we have a graphics card which can output the video in VGA format but we have a monitor which can only accept the video input in the DVI format. In that case we are going to need an adapter cable which can convert from VGA format to the DVI format video. So to begin with first let's just create a class for the VGA graphics card. This class is going to have a method which is going to return a VGA stream of video. Now for that VGA stream let's create another class and that class is going to be called as VGA stream. This VGA stream class is going to have two methods. The first one is going to be used to set the byte array or the byte data of the video. The second one is going to be used to return that byte data of the video. So first let's add a private variable or a private field for the video byte array and let's just name it as underscore stream. Now to set this byte array we can add a method which can be called as set data. This set data is going to accept a byte array as an argument and that argument is going to be set as the value for this underscore stream variable. To return this byte array we can have another method which can be called as get data which is simply going to return this underscore stream variable. Now we can use this VGA stream class over here in the VGA graphics card class. For that I am going to create a new method which is going to be called as get VGA stream and from this method we are going to return a new object of this VGA stream class type. So first let's just create a new object called as VGA stream. Now we need to set the video byte array or the video stream of the VGA stream class and for that we can use the set data method. So let's just call the set data method and I'm going to pass an empty byte array because we are not really concerned about the actual data. We just want to see how the adapter class is going to function in this example. So the set data method is going to set the video data for the VGA stream class and then finally we are going to return this VGA stream object. Now it's time to create the class for the DVI monitor that we are using and for that I'm going to create the class and it will be named as DVI monitor. This class is going to have a private field for the input stream which is going to be a byte array. And now we need to create a method to set this input stream byte array. But because this is a DVI monitor it is not going to accept the video in the VGA format. That is why we need to create another class for the DVI stream. And for that I'm just going to copy this VGA stream class and I'm going to paste it over here and I'm going to create a new class. 
and that class is going to be called as DVI stream. The rest of the class structure can be same as the VGA stream because the DVI stream can also be in the byte array format. So the methods set data and the get data can be used. Now let's get back to the DVI monitor class. And over here, I'm going to create a new method, which is going to be called as set input. Now this set input method is going to accept the argument for an object, which is going to be of the type DVI stream. Now let's add the body of this method. The private input stream byte array can simply be set by calling the input stream dot get data method, which is going to return the DVI stream objects underscore stream byte array, which is over here. So we have created the basic setup. We have the graphics card class. We have the monitor class and we have the classes for the VGA stream and the DVI stream. Now, as you can see, the monitor can only accept the DVI stream, but the graphics card is returning the VGA stream. So we need to create an adapter class, which is going to convert the VGA stream to the DVI stream. And the monitor can then accept a DVI stream converted from a VGA stream. So let's just create the adapter class and that adapter class is going to be called as VGA graphics card adapter because this is going to be an adapter for the VGA graphics card because this is going to be an adapter class for the VGA graphics card. It is a good idea to name it as such by suffixing the adapter name after the main class's name. So here is what's going to happen. We are going to have a private field for the VGA graphics card object. That object is going to be set by an argument which is going to be supplied in the constructor of this VGA graphics card adapter class. After that, we are going to create a method which is going to return the DVI stream which will convert the VGA video input to the DVI video output and then it will return that output in the form of a DVI stream class. First, I'm going to create a private field which is going to be of the type VGA graphics card and let's just call it as underscore VGA graphics card. Now let's create a constructor for this VGA graphics card adapter class. Now this constructor is going to accept the argument for this graphics card object and what we are going to do is we are going to set the instance of this underscore VGA graphics card which is a private field with this arguments value. Now we need to create a method which is going to return the DVI stream. So this is going to be of the type DVI stream and the name is going to be get DVI stream. Now this method is not going to accept any argument. The value for the VGA input is going to be fetched by calling this graphics card method which is get VGA stream. So let's just do that. So let's create a new byte array and let's just call it data. This is going to be set with the value of underscore VGA graphics card dot get VGA stream dot get data. This is going to return a byte array. Now we need to process the VGA input and convert it to a DVI output of video data. So for that, it is a good idea to create a new method inside this adapter class. So let's create a new private method inside this class and let's just call it convert from VGA to DVI and this is going to return a byte array which is going to be of the DVI type and this method is going to accept an input of the byte array which is going to be of the VGA type. So we are not actually going to write any kind of logic to convert from VGA to DVI. We just need to demonstrate that the conversion has been done. To do that, we can simply write a line to the console with the message that converted VGA video to DVI video, which will indicate that the video conversion has been done. And for the return value, let's just return a new empty byte array. Now we can use this convert from VGA to DVI method over here in this get DVI stream method. For that, let's create a new byte array and let's just call it DVI video data. Its value is going to be fetched by calling this method convert from VGA to DVI and the argument which is going to be supplied is going to be this data, which is the byte array fetched from the graphics card. After this, let's create a new class or a new object for the DVI stream and let's just call it dvi stream now all we need to do is to call the dvi stream objects set data method and we need to supply this dvi video data as an argument over here and then finally we can return this dvi stream object and this is the entirety of the vga graphics card adapter class now it's time to use this adapter class to set the dvi video input for our monitor which we are going to get from 
a VGA graphics card. We need to do all of that in the main method. So first, let's just write a message to the console setting input for DVI monitor. Now let's create a new object for the VGA graphics card. So VGA graphics card equals to new VGA graphics card. Let's now create an object for the DVI monitor too. So DVI monitor equals to new DVI monitor. Now we need to initialize the adapter class for the VGA graphics card. For that, let's first create a new object which is going to be called as VGA graphics card adapter equals to new VGA graphics card adapter. And I'm going to provide this VGA graphics card object as an argument over here. After doing that, we can set the input for our DVI monitor by calling its set input method. Now inside this set input method, we can supply the DVI video stream by calling this VGA graphics card adapter dot get DVI stream. And that's pretty much it. This should be enough to set the video input for our DVI monitor from a VGA video source. So that was all that we need to do. And now it's time to run and see if this code example is working. So the first message which is printed is setting input for DVI monitor. And then the method to convert the VGA video to DVI video, which we created for the adapter class over here, convert from VGA to DVI is being called. And that message is being printed on the console, converted VGA video to DVI video. And this is how this adapter class is working and it is setting the input for this DVI monitor. Now you must be thinking, why don't we use these conversion methods separately? Well, we can do that, but there can be more such data which needs to be adapted or converted for a newer interface. It is better to keep them all together encapsulated in a single class like over here in this adapter class. And that's pretty much everything that I have to share with you guys in this video about the adapter design pattern. Do let me know what you think about this. If you have any questions, then feel free to use the comments area and I will try to reply to you as soon as I can. Also, if you like this video, then please be sure to place a like on it and also subscribe to the Code First channel to be always the first one to get the news about the latest video updates. I am Nitej and I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care of yourselves and have a great time.